Hello, everybody. I'm so glad to be part of uh, Digital Freedom Festival this year. So I am Hanan, as she said, and I am a lecturer and a researcher, and I am the co-founder of Women in AI, which is a, an international organization for, uh, for uh, reducing the uh, gender gap in the field of artificial intelligence. Okay, so since we are in the Digital Freedom Festival, I would be talking to you about the freedom of algorithms, of AI algorithms and systems in terms of bias. So how to create bias-free uh, AI systems and algorithms. I don't think I have the pointer. Uh, pointer. They forgot to give me the pointer. <laughs> ah, there's a... Okay. So... Oh. Oh. Okay. So... As you all know and uh, agree with me, we are living in a biased world. Um, as human beings, we tend to have biased, biased opinions and we tend to make biased decisions. We are always uh, creating stereotypes about things around us and judging people and uh, uh, categorizing people, things and actions around us. Okay, so this is a map uh, called the stereotype map I have found on the internet, uh, which uh, shows how an American citizen uh, like looks at the other people uh, of the world. And I don't know who did this map, but I find it very representative of the biases and the stereotypes that we carry within ourselves. So even the, the, the title of the, this map holds prejudice and holds bias against the uh, American uh, average person. And you all remember this dress, okay? And the buzz that it created about its color because uh, each person saw it differently. Uh, some people saw it uh, blue and black, others saw it white and gold, and others sandy and, and blue. So the bottom, the bottom line is we, as a human beings, we, are, we have biased systems. Uh, our brains are really bad decision makers, okay? So AI is giving us the chance to create not only machines that are smarter than us on specific tasks, but also to create machines that are better decision makers than us. However, if uh, the, the problem with, with uh, machine learning algorithms and data is that they have the, uh, they have the uh, ability to transfer and to uh, magnify the bias in the ta data that we feed them, okay? So if we don't take significant actions, we are at risk of mirroring uh, some uh, biases and prejudice that exist already in our world. Now, I will show you some, some algorithms, uh, some uh, examples of how AI exists, uh, like bias in AI exists in the current systems that we are using. Uh, and it comes in several types, uh, starting from the bias in uh, discrimination and decision making of the AI systems. Uh, let us look at this example. This is an example of, um, um, of uh, yes, a machine learning algorithm that was uh, predicting if a criminal will be at risk of indulging of in criminal activities when he's out of the prison. And the machine learning algorithm was uh, saying that uh, labeling black people as being at high risk of indulging in criminal activities compared to white men who had the same um, background, same cultural background. And this is another example showing how uh, Google, okay, a research uh, at Carnegie Mellon University has shown that um, Google was showing personalized ads to women uh, of um, jobs that are paid more than $200,000. They were shown to fewer women than men. And other type of bias in algorithm is uh, called interaction, emergent, and similarity bias, which involves how AI algorithm evolve, evolves with time uh, during interaction uh, in time. 
So I don't know, do you all remember uh, Tay, which is the racist, sexist bad bot who, who was um, released by Microsoft a few, few years ago, and uh, through the interaction with his tw Twitter followers, Tay become, became racist and sexist just by interacting with his followers. And another example is the emergent bias. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that uh, on your timeline, uh, each time you, you put like on some post, you will have uh, all the content that is shown on, on your time, uh, timeline that is skewed towards what, you, what interests you, which um, results in that there are lots of information that you are missing, information that can, um, that can interest you, and it will create a certain of content bubble with time, which is called emergent, emergent bias. And the danger of bias in, in algorithms and in, in AI is that we can be manipulated, okay? We can be shown content that might change the way we want and that make us cha choose something over the other. And there are rumor, rumors that say that the only reason why Trump has been elected is because of the content wa that was display displayed to users on Facebook. Now, uh, stereotypes. Uh, algorithms also uh, are reflecting existing stereotypes in, in our society. And for example, um, uh, virtual assistants such as Alexa and Google Home, they have uh, women voices and they are um, tasked with simple tasks, while other assistants that are um, tasked with more sophisticated problem-solving problems, they have men voices and, uh, and uh, like uh, Einstein, uh, like they, they are referred to Einstein. So as if women are supposed to do the simple task and men are supposed to be the intelligent ones. And this is another example of, um, of Apple phone which when you, when you write a CEO, CEO, it will show you the emoticon of, uh, of a man and not a woman, even though the user of this phone is a woman. And another example, which is really uh, important, which is, it is uh, Google Translate. Because in Google Translate, they uh, associate certain types of, uh, uh, of um, jobs to women and other like more important and more sophisticated jobs for men, like a, a boss, philosopher, engineer, doctor, they are supposed to be men, and nurse, nanny, and librarian, it is a woman. So if you write in Spanish or in Turk, Turkish, uh, gender, um, gender um, neutral articles, it will, it will translate it to she or he according to the, uh, to the profession. And this was my last example. <clears throat> so these examples shows you how uh, the data we, we, feed, we feed to, um, to algorithms, they have the risk of mirroring uh, existing biases and stereotypes that we have in our world. And so the question is, how can we find, fight bias? Uh, it is possible to fight bias. However, it is very challenging. And I'll present you some solutions if you have AI systems and use machine learning in order to overcome the bias that you have in your models or in your data. So you have two, um, two ways or two facets that you can attack in order to fight bias. Uh, first of all, algorithmic. Now, from an algorithmic point of view, you have seen that, and I think it's clear for you that when you feed uh, biased data to your models, to your AI models, uh, you are at risk of, of learning these biases in the, in the data. Okay, so the first thing to do is to check the data sets that you are using in order to uh, train your models. You, you can check the, check, uh, the data sets for, uh, uh, for biases and for discrimination. And to do that, there are lots of statistical models that exist that permit you to see if the data set is clean and diverse and if it, is, it has discrimination uh, embedded in it. The, th the second thing is uh, another cause of bias might be the model itself. Because you know that AI models are black boxes, and we don't know how the algorithm is uh, treating the data in order to classify between negative and positive examples. Okay, so we don't know that, and so we don't know what feature does it use 
in order to say that this is, uh, for example, accepted or not, or to classify one example over the other. So a possible way to fight bias is to look into the model, OK? And luckily, there, like over the past year, there have been some frameworks that are, were developed in order to show you how the model, the AI model, is classifying the examples. One of them is Lime, uh, FairML, SHAP, Google What If, and IBM Bias Assessment Toolkit. And this is an example of uh, Lime, the Lime framework, showing you uh, an example of classification between religion, re religious people, and uh, atheists, and it's uh, starting from uh, text, okay? And it shows you what are the words that were used by the algorithm in order to uh, classify between atheists and religious people. So if you have a company or you are a startup that is using AI, you can use such, uh, such frameworks in order to look into your data. And there's something I want to uh, point out here that it is very important to perform a thorough testing of the A product or algorithm before putting it into, um, into the market. Uh, for example, there is some criticism about uh, Google, a Google algorithm that was classifying black people as gorillas in image recognition. And I think that if Google have uh, tested their, their, their model or their algorithm on, uh, on uh, black people, it will know beforehand that their uh, algorithm does not work for black people and it would have fixed it. So it is very important to know the, uh, the limitations and the weaknesses and the power of your model or, or of your algorithm before you put it on, uh, on the market so that people won't feel defendant, def uh, defended, offended by it. And I think on the long term, since bias is really important and the ethical matter is, is becoming more and more important, and we are talking a lot about it, uh, companies might need to hire what we call bias detectors that will look into the data and it will analyze the model and the, uh, and the data in order to uh, look for possible discrimination in it. And finally, last but not least, uh, the other way in order to um, check for bias in, in machine learning on in artificial intelligence is the design. It is very important how the product is designed. Okay, So just like when we design for user experience, we can design for a bias-free ethical, ethical product. Okay, So uh, how, how can this be done? It can be done by, first of all, identifying who are the end users of the product and then asking the users their opinion, and then thinking with the team, brainstorming with the team on what are the possible, possible ethical implications in the product that, that, they will be, uh, that you will be doing. And to tell you, like to show you just uh, why is it important, this design thing, uh, this is an example of the assistance, virtual assistance re response to sexual harassment. So they tested uh, Siri, Alexa, Cortana, and Google Home for their response to sexual harassment. Now, uh, what, is, what is really weird is that Siri and Alexa, they have responded in a flirtuous manner and in a, um, in a very positive man manner to uh, sexual harassment, while Cortana and Google Home, they, th they responded with jokes. Okay? Now, this, this signifies a problem, a design problem, in, in how these AI systems were, were designed. And now, while the exact gender, gender uh, break, breakdown uh, behind this, um, this, uh, the design of these systems is unknown, but it is, you can be sure that the vast majority is men. It is more likely that men who has designed the systems and manually programmed them in order to respond in a joking manner to sexual harassment. So what this imply? This implies that it is very important to have diversity in your team, in, in, in your AI team. So <laughs> having more diversity and having women point of view would, for example, prevent such uh, occurrences of biases or stereotypes through the, the design of the AI systems. So um, uh, while diversity, it includes more than just women, but since I am biased towards women, I will talk more about like, uh, the employment of women. 
And so you might tell me that there is not a lot of women in, in AI, and how can we have more women team members in order to work in this domain? And I would say, tell you, don't worry, because in women in AI, we are preparing for, we are preparing for you women to be uh, team leaders, uh, to be AI experts, and to be uh, members in AI, um, in AI teams. And how we are doing this? We are doing it through a, a, a program that uh, uh, tackles all the ages of, of women from a young age until they become uh, uh, adults. And so we have uh, educational programs for uh, girls from a young age in order to, um, uh, to guide them towards doing more AI and more uh, STEM-related studies, and we are also uh, pushing women to go on stage and to be leaders and role models in, in their do domains. And I don't know if you know this woman that is featured on this slide, but this is Augusta Ada King, the Countess, Countess of Lovelace. Uh, she was an English mathematician and the first one to say that uh, a machine has more things to do than just pure calculation, and she, have, she has published uh, an algorithm on, on the subject. So um, I think that she can be a great role model for, uh, for women in this modern society. And finally, I would like to say, so let's, women has the cap capability, capacity to be leaders, and so uh, hire more, more women in your teams, and let's use the power of women to shape this future. Thank you. Thank you, Hanan. This time I'm bringing the fortune cookies with me, and otherwise I will forget. So for you as well, one fortune cookie as a Thank souvenir. You. And uh, we might have time for one question. Uh, is anyone willing to ask the question as we have only one? Okay, awesome. You have to catch the box, the catch box. Uh, where should I, uh, could you, Hannah, describe uh, in uh, as much detail as possible how female mind, how woman's mind differs from male's mind? Um, the way we evolved, okay, it made women um, more uh, emotionally intelligent. Uh, more capable of understanding others, more capable of uh, being empathic and sympathetic, you know? Uh, whereas men has evolved in a way to be more of problem solver and focusing on one thing, women are more multitasked. And so, uh, like, the intelligence that we have developed uh, separately is a little bit separate. Like, it, it is, a, like, the, it, we are not the same, exactly, even though that you can find women that are more of problem solvers and men that are, like, more emotionally intelligent. But uh, this is how, how, I, how I see it. So that's why we need, like, we need teams that are inclusive, that have both points of view, like, of the world in order to design AI systems. And, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Hanan.